Today we share from the Gospel of Luke again, chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the feet, uh, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has let me do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Psalm 27 verse 4 says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. The psalmist captures for us this idea that when we set our hearts on wanting to be in that full presence of God, that moment that we could be at his feet and witness his nearness, that it's a, a positive thing for us. It moves us in the direction that we need to be because that's certainly where God wants us. He has crafted us and made us and he's invited us into this relationship. All through our life we witness this activity of the Spirit in our lives where maybe even when we're not even aware of it, it's this prevenient grace of God that's wooing us into a relationship with Him. And then that justifying grace brings us to the place that we make a, a commitment to Him like He has to us. And then we walk with Him hand in hand, moving towards in our sanctifying grace to the place that we can be more Christ-like and more in His presence. And the psalmist captures this in this one verse when the psalmist says, one thing do I seek, and that's to be in the full presence of God. But sometimes we get sidetracked and we forget that that's really where we're, where we're going. We tend to make it more about making our agenda and doing those things that we think will somehow or another impress God and make that opportunity more available for us than it's ever been. When it, it can't be more available than it already is. God is more desiring of a relationship with you and me than he's ever been. But along the way, we encounter those moments where we find ourselves going through the motions and not really being there the way that we can. And little did I know, whenever I was putting together the sermon list for July and trying to lay out according to the scriptures where we were going to be each Sunday, that I'd be speaking to you this Sunday about something that was so important to our lives as we're living it right now. The truth is, um, this idea of being in a ministry of being there for each other and being there for the world and being there for one another was something that I believed in, but it became very real this week. And it's already been alluded to by Connie, but the fact is, is that each time I went to visit for Betty Jones, I would hear a list of who had been there. They would be glad and proud to tell me who had already been by to visit. In other words, y'all started replacing me before I ever got there. By the time I got there, that was already here. And this people been here, these people been here, here's some others been here. Some of y'all came in secret ways that you weren't supposed to. In other words, I know of one that came and wasn't supposed to be driving, but it did. <laughs> you were there. And the more I encountered that family, the more I began to hear how important it was to them that you were there. You were there. And it's not the first time. It's happened before. It's happened in different places in my life and ministry. You know, statistics show and it's proven over and over again, a visit from the pastor is expected. It is. I can go in, I can do an eloquent prayer. I can be on top of my game. I can have it timed and worked out where I'm there at the right time. It's a God moment. And then you walk in and say, hey, just want to check in. They're going, oh, oh. What I hear is, Pastor, we know you need to be somewhere. So uh, you've probably got others you need to take care of. 
but you have a ministry just in being there. Just in being there. And we got to make a distinction here. It's not about just the presence. It's about being there. It's about being invested in people. It's about caring enough to engage a conversation. It's about caring enough to be quiet. And just be there. It's about being sensitive enough when you get there that you've put away your agenda, you put away all your things, and your goal is just to be what they need in that moment. Maybe they need someone to vent to and to talk to and to share their frustrations. Maybe to tell you how bad the hospital food is or whatever. Maybe the real need here is for them just to have you be quiet and be still with them and not try to say something that's going to make it all okay. And maybe it's just about being a voice of God's family that says, you need to know that we pray for you. And you need to know that we're here with you in spirit. It doesn't take a lot sometimes to be there. And we tend to want to make it more than it is, or we tend to want to say we're not equipped to do it, but you are. Your presence, your being there is a ministry God has given each of us. You know, so often we get so involved in our own world that we find ourselves in a place where we think it doesn't matter. Oh, they won't notice me if I'm not there. This Sunday, they can do that without me. I don't have a special role. I had someone say to me one time, if I'm not on a committee, I don't think I have to be at that meeting. Well, that's not true. Your presence, your being there will always make a difference. Our children are going to do a Christmas program or a special program or a VBS Sunday. Your presence, your being there makes a huge difference. They identify you as the church. And they care about whether your face is out there or not. What a joy it is sometimes when I come out here to preach and to be in worship with you that I look out there in the congregation and I see a familiar face from years past or someone who's remembering me and thinking about me or a conversation we've had this week with this person or that person and your presence makes a difference to me and I hope and pray that you can sense that whenever you see each other and greet each other on a Sunday morning or in the store during the week or wherever life takes us. I get teased all the time. Richard, you can't go anywhere if you don't see somebody you know. And it's true. I can go somewhere sometimes and I'm just doing, I'll be, be one of those days when I'm dressed for whatever, you know, and I didn't care. I just put a hat on and went. And that's the day I'm going to run into people. I have a wonderful story about that. I, was, I had a tonsillectomy done in my 40s, okay, and late 40s. And, uh, and the tonsils, adenoids, th the sinuses scraped, the whole works. It was painful, I'll tell you the truth. So if anyone, that doctor ever tells you that we're going to do this, it won't be a big deal, you tell them you talk to your pastor, okay. It, was, it hurt. And when I woke up and I was in pain, I wasn't comfortable, I had to, you know, work through it. And then on a Sunday morning, my, I had run out of pain medicine, and um, I needed to get my medicine. And so um, I, I went to Target where my medicine was. It's about 10.30 in the morning. And I'm walking in to go get in line at Target to get my medicine, and guess what? I'm running into people from Pollard right and left, all the way down from the front door all the way down. And guess what I kept hearing over and over again? What are you doing here? And the real question was, what are you doing here? You got a, I got an excuse. I finally decided that if I really want to do evangelism and outreach and congregational care, I need to go to Walmart or Target during the church hour. That's when I'm going to find them all, right? Or go to the lake and go fishing. I'm going to find people everywhere I go. We have this ministry of presence that God has given us. And we need to remember this is a gift of God that we can use. We can do some great things with it. We can recognize people and have conversation. We can share our lives and experiences together. The saddest words you and I will ever hear is this. You should have been there. You know, so often we tend to think that our real ministry to people is to go out there and say, we missed you. But I read an article one time which said if we really want to be evangelists, what we need to do is go out and say to them, you should have been there. You missed something. Not that we missed you, but you missed something. You missed the fellowship of God. You missed the opportunity to be in the presence of God, to witness God, to experience God. You need to come. 
and be with me next time because you, you missed it. And what a difference it makes in our expression when we become the, opportun the opportunity of, when we take that opportunity to become the messengers, the ministers of a real presence, what we find and discover is that it does make a difference when someone's there or not there. Not because of attendance records, attendance numbers, but because the ministry of worship, the enhancement of God's spirit can be magnified with the number of people who are together in one place. As a youth director, I used to make it a big deal. I'd walk in the room. I'd have the, one of the dynamic youth devotional put together, fantastic game, people all the quit, all the everything. This was going to be the night of nights for youth ministry. I was so excited. I'd be building it up, and I'd walk in, and there'd be half as many people as I thought was there. And what I learned to do early on was this. Well, where is everybody? What's wrong? Where, where, where is everybody? And what I discovered over the years was that that was the last thing that God wanted me to do in that moment, was to walk in a room, look at people who are present with me, and say, where is everybody? It'd be the same as if I walked in this room right now and I looked for an empty place or an empty pew, and I said, well, who sits here? And that was all my focus. The truth is, I need to look at you. I need to celebrate you and your being here. And so what I've learned to do is when I would come to those experiences, I would walk in the room and I'm saying, thank you for being here. Oh, wow, this is great. And I would build them up and let them know their presence is ministry. Their presence is something that God can use. And it's the same for you and it's the same for me. So Mary and Martha, it's a story we know. Jesus is invited to the home of Martha. That's huge. Jesus in the house. I'm proud of that. I want things nice. I want to make sure that he feels comfortable. Jesus, take my chair, please. Jesus, can I get you anything? I'm, oh, I'm excited about this, right? That she loves Jesus. Mar Martha is so excited about Jesus as being there. She's celebrating the ministry of presence, his presence with her. But then she wanders off and gets sidetracked, as the scripture tells us, by all the things that have to be done for Jesus to be there. Any of you ever witnessed this in your experience? Someone invites you to their home, you go in and you sit down, and then they never sit down with you? Any, uh, you know, I love it, that movie, The Christmas Story, where uh, he's telling the story about they're having dinner that night. It's early on in the movie, if you want to watch it sometime. It's a little clip, and he says, I don't think my mother has eaten a complete meal for X number of years. Because she's just up and down, taking care of everybody else. And she start to eat, she get up, she do something else. Sometimes that's us. We make church so much work. We make this worship experience so much effort. We do so many things and so many details are going on that we don't really get to worship and be in the presence of God. Telling the truth, I worked with a senior pastor, and I had several of them I worked with, but there was one in particular that had us time out everything on the bulletin. The children's message was supposed to be no more than two and a half to three minutes long. Tell the children that. Okay? Because things happen. I found myself keeping my bulletin handy and trying to record how much time things were taking. And I was so involved pretty soon in the details of worship that I wasn't experiencing worship the way I could. And it was a dilemma. Because I was there, but I wasn't being there. And it happens to all of us. We'll leave here today and we'll be able to say everything that was wrong about the service, the errors of the bulletin. I've had people turn those in with red mark, pin marks before, too. But we spend all of our energy on the details that we miss the whole experience. And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. We are in a ministry of being there when it comes to God. And God loves it when you're there, by the way. He loves it when you're there. And so Martha goes to Jesus and she says, Jesus, I can't get everything done. I'm not getting any time with you. Don't you feel sorry for me? Tell my sister Mary to get up and help me. Then we can all sit down here and relax together. And Jesus puts it all in perspective. He says, Martha, Martha. And I love the words he uses here. You are 
worried and upset about many things. But few things are really needed. Or indeed, only one. Maybe Jesus knew the psalmist's words about one thing do I seek, and that's to be in the full presence of God. What more could you have in this moment than to be with Jesus? Nothing else is going to be more important. Well, I know, but, but the napkins aren't out yet. And I know, but well, I need serving spoons still for these things over here. I know, but we don't have enough chairs in this room yet. I, I see that, Jesus, but everything has to be warm at the right time. The microwave's going busy right now, but I need someone just to man that for me if they could. Jesus, you, we're trying to have the perfect meal here. That's all I wanted. One thing matters, Martha. One thing. And your sister seems to know what it is. And when you know what it is, nothing can be taken away from you. One thing did Mary seek, which was to be with Jesus. <laughs> you ever had that moment before when you arrived for worship a little early and you just sit there? I had a pastor friend once who did this at the end of every message. He finished his message, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then he went and sat down, and everybody had been instructed on the staff, don't move. Just stay where you are. Let's wait 60 seconds and let God's work seek in. Let's give God a chance just to let us have that moment that we could have a real presence with him. And that maybe... Maybe in this 60 seconds, we'll know what it's like to really be in his presence. And he'll fill my presence with him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, in the fullness of God's grace, I invite you to not hear, but to respond to the presence of God today.